Watchman. The Watchman. The Watchman. The Watchman. The Watchman. The Watchman. The Watchman. And good afternoon once more And welcome to the program The Watchman I am your host, Minister Curtis Roach Come Lord Jesus, come and take us home, hallelujah Listening to Everlasting Life Radio, broadcasting from the United Kingdom. Yes. Come for me, come for me, take me home. I'm all ready. Good afternoon once more and welcome to The Watchman. And today I will be presenting a teaching to you. Uh, first of all, let me just uh, reintroduce myself for the sake of our new listeners. My name is Minister Curtis Roach and this is a program that is entitled the watchman in the, on this program we talk about the end times and we teach you give you teachings on uh, on how uh, to be ready for this time and in this time okay uh i did mention i think last week on the program where that i will be telling you or giving you a uh, cheating for the next two weeks. Uh, I have a two-part series that I want to uh, bring to you today, and uh, the title of the series is "The Key to Eternal Life." That's uh, the key 
to eternal life. And uh, for this week and next week, I will be breaking this in two segments. And I uh, would admonish you to tune in, uh, to, to listen carefully if you have uh, your notepads, your notebooks, to take careful notes as this is a very, uh, very serious message from the Lord. The Lord has sent a word to help you and to get you in a, a state of readiness for his imminent return because as we have been talking and showing you for the past few weeks his coming is very close the coming of the Lord is at hand he is at the door ready to open that door and but the question is are you ready to go with him when he comes should he appear today are you ready so as we begin as i said the topic that we will be exploring today is the key to eternal life now this topic that i want to speak about is not a very popular subject in fact it is a subject that it's regularly not uh, heard especially from the pulpits is a topic that we tend to avoid many times but as your watchman I am not here to tell you what you want to hear in fact I am here to tell you what you need to hear and what you need to hear is the word of God, the undiluted word of God. The key to eternal life. What is the key? Now, if you were to lose your house key, you would look for it because without that key, you will not be able to get into your house. So wherever that key is, you will search for that key. You will search all day, all night until you find it because you know without that key, you will not be able to open your door to get into your house. And it is the same way with the key of heaven. The key to eternal life. You must find it and use it to get in to heaven to get into your promise eternal life because that key is the only key that will fit those pearly gates to heaven the thing about this key however it's not really lost you know it's not lost what happened is is that you're blinded to where it is the enemy has put a blindfold over your eye. So you're not seeing the key. Although the key is right in front of you, right in your grasp. You cannot see it because your eyes are shut tight by the enemy. You're so distracted by everything else that is around you. That you're not aware that the very key that, you're, that you need is right in front of you. But today I want you to open your eyes because this is a simple matter. It is a free choice that you can make to open up your eyes. Your eyes, they are not glued down. Nobody's holding them down. It is only you. You have the choice to just open your eyes and to see what you need to see. Going to the very important question now. What is the key to eternal life? 
And if you would turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. It says, Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. And listen to this now. For without holiness, no one will see the Lord. It says that without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So that is your key right there. Holiness, to live a life of holiness. To walk holy and blameless before the Lord. That is your key. That is your guarantee to heaven. Is to be holy, to follow peace with everyone. And to be holy, because the word of God is telling us today that without holiness, no one, absolutely no one will see the Lord. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter where you come from, what position you have in society, or even what position you have in the church. Could be a bishop could be a prophet, it could be an apostle, whatever. It doesn't matter who you are. If you are not holy, if you're not walking in the steps of holiness, you're not going to see the Lord. This is not me saying this, you know. I want you to understand that I'm only a messenger of the word of God. I'm only delivering the word that was given to me to give to you. So if you have a problem with the word, take it up with the one who sent the messenger and leave the messenger out of this. But the word is sure. The word of God says that the word of God is forever settled in heaven. So it is saying in this book of Hebrews that no one will see the Lord without holiness. So it is not an option. Holiness it is not an option. It is a command. Regardless of your circumstance. Regardless of anything. Holiness is a must. You must be holy if you want to enter the pearly gates of heaven. If we were to look at the word holiness, it means to set apart. Or to cut or to separate from. So to be holy you have to be set apart. Just as it says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17. It says, Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate. In other words, be holy, said the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. So it is only when you decide to separate yourself from the world. It is only when you decide to separate yourself from everything that is of this world that the Lord said he will receive you. And he continues to say in the 18th verse that he will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters. What more could you ask for? How better can it get than that? A simple request is for us to separate ourselves. To look on the things that are above and not on the things that are on this earth. Not to touch the unclean things of this world. Just so that we can be received by our Lord and Savior. So that we can be in receipt of his divine favor. So as I said before, it is not an option. We may think that we can have one foot in and one foot out. That we can relax and enjoy certain things. And at the same time, we pretend to be holy, we pretend to be born again Christians but it is not like that in fact it's just 
does not work like that. We have to be in full pursuit of holiness. We have to be in full pursuit of holiness. We can't be in pursuit of other things and still be in pursuit of holiness. We have to let go one to hold on to the other. We have to let go one and hold on to the other. We cannot be in pursuit of two things at the same time. So if you want to make it to heaven, holiness is the option to take. Now this is a command from our Lord and Savior. It says in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 15 to 16, But as the one who called you is holy, you yourselves also be holy in all your conduct and manner of living. Now I want you to look at this verse very carefully. Because if you are to live a life of holiness, it is very imperative that you understand what is required in a life of holiness. Now the verse is saying that you have to be holy in all your conduct. Very important word. In all your conduct and your manner of living. Now your conduct, it means your attitude. The way you are with other people. It's all about the way you talk. The things that you say. The way how you say them. Are you talking like the world? Or are you talking according to the Spirit? It's all about your manner of living, which can include the way you dress, your reactions to various circumstances that you will face on a daily basis. Now I just want to touch just a little bit on the way you dress because it is a subject that is very popular nowadays. And I want to be very clear that a piece of clothing cannot take you to hell. A short dress cannot take you to hell. What will take you to hell is your reason for wearing that dress. Because the way how God looks on it, it is not about your external circumstances or what you do externally. It is all about your heart. What's in your heart? What's the purpose in your heart? So are you putting on that just, just for your own gratification? Are you putting on that just, just so that others can look on you and appreciate how you look. Are you doing it to get attention from someone? Does God get the glory out of it? Do Those are the questions that you should be asking yourself each and every time you decide to put on a piece of clothing, to put on a piece of jewelry. Because in your heart, if you're not doing it for the glory of God, you are asking for a bit of trouble. The word of God is very clear that God must get the glory in everything. That he must be glorified in everything that we do. The way we walk, the way we talk, the way we dress, the way how we react, how our attitude is, should glorify God. 
If God was to look on you and to comment on you, on the way how you look right now, with regards to what you are wearing, would he be pleased to see you? Will he be pleased to see how you look or are you wearing that skimpy dress showing off your breasts, showing off your legs just for the sake of being pretty or just for the sake of being seen by anyone who would want to look and appreciate how you look? I'll tell you exactly what you're doing. You're playing right into the trap of the enemy. You are playing right into the trap of the enemy and you are headed straight to hell if you are not doing what you do to glorify God. All and everything you do must glorify God. And in First Chronicles Chapter 16 verse 29 is, tells us that Give to the Lord the glory due to his name. Give the Lord his glory. Give to the Lord his glory. And it continues and says at the latter part of that verse that we should worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. See, the Lord regards holiness as a thing of immense beauty so we have to see that beauty the Lord wants to see that beauty emanating from you the beauty that he requires in your life how you do things how you talk how you treat other people he wants to see the beauty in it before you can be considered as being holy now that is the command that the Lord is giving us today that in all manners of things and in everything that we do, do it as unto the Lord. Worship Him in the beauty of that holiness. But you may ask the question, I mean, who, who says so? I mean, you, you may want to ask me, who sent me with that message? Or you might want to think that maybe I am just trying to make these things up. Or, but I'm here to tell you that it's a word that is coming directly from the word of God. And if you want to know exactly who sent me with this message, turn to the book of Leviticus chapter 11 verse 44. And it says, For I... I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. That is the person. That is the person that sent me with this message to you today. He says to tell you that you shall therefore consecrate yourselves. And you shall be holy. For I am holy. He said, I am the Lord. He is God, the creator of heavens, the creator of earth. He is the one who created you. He is the one who gave you the breath of life. You only breathe because of him. He is the one who gives you strength to move from day to day. He is the one who wakes you up in the morning. He is the one who protects you throughout the day. Keeping you from all harm. From all sickness and dangers. He is your God. He is your God. He is the one who is speaking to you today. To tell you that he requires holiness from you. And he said something very, very peculiar. In the book of Hosea. Chapter 11 verse 9 he says in the middle of that verse he says for I am God and not man. I'm not a man that will change my mind. 
You know, man, they would make promises to you. They may tell you to do certain things and no longer than five minutes afterwards, they come with some different instructions. Men's minds are very easy to change. They only adapt to circumstances. Man will change his mind to suit his environment. But I'm so glad that we serve a God that is the same yesterday. He is the same today. And thank God he's going to be the same tomorrow and forevermore. So he says, I am God and not man. So you can bank on every word that proceeded out of his mouth. Every word that he sent, you can bank on it. You may ask again, what's the benefit in all this holiness thing? The benefit, according to Romans 6.22, is eternal life. Hallelujah. It says, but now having been set free from sin, having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life what more can you ask you want to know what's the benefit he said that when you stand before God on judgment day when the question is asked about the condition of your heart With regards to deciding your destination, your final destination, whether it be heaven or hell. Jesus is telling you today that if you live a life in holiness, that he will be able to say, in accordance with 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13, he will be able to say, Father... I have established his or her heart blameless in holiness before you. Hallelujah. He would be confident to tell the Father that he has established your heart blameless in holiness before God. And you will be able to smile, to be confident. And be ready to hear those sweet words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Use your key and enter into the pearly gates. Use your key and enter into your rest. Hallelujah. So it's either you're going to be hearing that or you're going to be hearing I do not know you. Those words will create weeping and gnashing of teeth. Those words will create fear and despair. If the Lord Jesus was to look on you on the day of judgment and tell you that he does not know you, your necks destination is going to be hell that place where we have heard about last week a place of torment of torture of everlasting despair everlasting pain everlasting darkness unlike what you can even imagine right now it is not a place you want to be. It is not a place where you want to go. And to tell you more, it is not a place that was created for you. You were not meant to be there. No human being on this earth was meant to go to hell. We will only go there if we choose to go there. 
God loves us. God loves you. And he wants the best for you. He wants to take you home. Your rightful home in heaven. He has a mansion prepared for you. But it is your choice if you choose not to be obedient to what he's trying to tell you today. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. Romans 8 14 says, For as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Or you can even say that we are all children of God once we are led by the Spirit of God. So you see, it's plain and clear that we have to be holy. It is not an option. And the good thing about it is God has provided the means to be holy. He did not just give his command and expect us to walk in a state knowing fully well that we were born in sin and shame. Knowing fully well that of our own strength that we cannot accomplish this task. But he has provided the means. He has left us with the Holy Spirit. Who is our helper? Who can teach us? Who can guide us? Who can lead us in the way that we should go? We have a helper. A helper that knows the mind of God. That knows exactly what we need to do, when we need to do it, and how we need to do it. But we still have our part to play in the whole issue. We have to play our part and accept our responsibilities to walk the walk. Every Christian, everyone that calls himself or herself a Christian is expected and is called to live a holy life. There are absolutely no exceptions. For with God it is either you're in full pursuit of holiness or you're not. You cannot be halfway. You cannot think you can do most of it and get away, get away with a, a little bit of it. You have to be in full pursuit. You must be in full pursuit. And the good thing about it is that we have help. We have help. We have the Holy Spirit to help us. And I want to tell you finally that uh, Romans chapter 1 verse 4 also describes the Holy Spirit as the spirit of holiness. Now you may not see the, the significance of the different names, but the Holy Spirit is merely describing the Spirit of God as being holy. But the significance of, the, of how the book of Romans described the Holy Spirit as the spirit of holiness is that it is telling you that the Spirit of God has the ability to impart holiness. In other words, the Holy Spirit can deposit holiness within you. So as a child of God, you have the Holy Spirit residing inside of you. You have the very Spirit of God living within you. And He is not just there taking up space. He comes with a bag full of holiness that you can withdraw from. That you can have Him deposit within you. But you yourself, as I said before, you have to make that decision and give him that space to work. 
you have to allow him to do the things that he wants to do to work on you the way that he wants to work on you you have to be obedient to his still small voice doing the things that you need to do holding fast to his instructions it is very plain and clear it is very very plain and clear that without holiness that you cannot enter into heaven that the Lord will not be able to guarantee your place in heaven God himself he cannot look on you if you are not holy so I would admonish you to think seriously about your life examine yourself today The things that you're doing right now, examine the motives. The way you dress on a regular basis, on a daily basis, examine your motives for putting on what you put on. Are you giving God glory in what you do? That is a very serious question. And I'm going to end right there for the first part of this two-part series and next week I will be addressing that all very important question how do I live holy or how can I be holy I will be showing you from the word of God how to walk that walk to get you in that place where God can be Confident about the state of your heart. Where you yourself can be confident. Knowing that you are heaven bound. So tune in again next week for part two. Of this series. The key to eternal life. Again we have learned. That the key. We we'll find the answer in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 which tells us to make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. And it finally ends and tells you that without holiness no man will see the Lord. The watchman. The watchman. The watchman. The watchman. You are listening to the Watchman. Friends, for the next few minutes, I would like to share with you a letter from the Lord that was received by the woman of God by the name of Susan Davis. We had her in the studio by the way of telephone a couple of weeks ago. And as uh, we learned that she is an end-time messenger of the Lord, a recipient of the, of the mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit, gifted in the area in that she can hear the audible voice of God. And God uses her mightily in these last days to send out his word to us, to the world at large. He dictates letters which he has instructed her to make readily available to all that will hear or all that will listen. So I have the last letter that I have in my possession from her which uh, she received on the 31st of May of this year and I want to spend just the last few minutes to read this word to you it is a letter again 
that was dictated directly from the Lord audibly to Susan Davis and I'll get right into it right now and it says yes I can give you words and that is the Lord speaking to Susan it is I your Lord I am coming I spoke it and I will fulfill it it is my word my word never fails the hour is approaching for this fulfillment you will continue to see events leading up to this event things spoken of so long ago these events will intensify as my coming is close don't let my coming take you by surprise let these signs speak to your spirit wake you up i do not want you to be paralyzed with fear but i do want you to have a healthy fear of god don't fall asleep at the wheel when i come for my own many will be caught unawares but not caught up to safety horror and terror will be their reward for not paying attention and for not watching and seeking me for my salvation and guidance this hour approaches and the majority cannot focus on their God the world is just too enticing soon the enticement of the world will go flat the flavor will be a bitter pill to swallow seek your God surrender your all to me I am worth knowing I bled and I died for you I gave you life and your being come to know me today it is almost time for these events to take place hide under my wing come under my blood covering there is no other place to retreat I am the shelter in a storm I am and that is the word that was sent from God to you today, to all of us. Telling us that his coming is near and that we should be ready. We should not be caught by surprise. He has been sending his signs. He has been sending his words. He has been sending his warnings. We need to take heed. The coordinating scriptures for what I just read, 1 King 8 56, that's 1 King chapter 8, verse 56, also Psalms 1 19 89, also Psalms 1 19, verse 160, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8, Isaiah chapter 55 verse 10 and 11 Matthew chapter 24 verse 35 John chapter 10 verse 35 and first Peter chapter 1 verse 25 and as we come to a close as we come to the end of this program today I trust that you were listening with an open heart and I pray that the Holy Spirit will convict you 
in the way that you are in the life that you are living I admonish you to be listen to be attentive to the voice of the Holy Spirit it is very easy to be doing things not knowing that we are on the wrong path Because there are so many noise, noises around us. So many different types of distractions that the enemy has put in our path. That we are unable to hear that voice. We are unable to find that quiet place. To create that closet where we can go into the presence of the Lord. Just him and you. Just the two of you. Where you can talk to him. Where you can listen and hear his voice. The Lord, He loves you. He is sending a word today to tell you that He loves you and He don't want to see you perish. But you must repent. The Lord is calling you to repentance today. Wherever you are right now, you're listening to the sound of my voice. These words, they are not coming from my heart. I have been sent here with this message from the Lord. Take heed. Take heed, I say. Take heed. For the Lord is speaking to you. Open up your hearts today. And accept him as your Lord and Savior. Wherever you are right now, I want to lead you in a prayer of repentance. If you're not saved, today is the accepted day. Not only because the rapture is upon us, not only because it can happen at any time but there is this thing called death where you do not know where you're not guaranteed to live tomorrow in fact you don't even know if today is your appointed time you don't know if you have an appointment today with the Lord you do not know if you have an appointment today with death. You can die at any time. So why risk it? Why risk your soul? Make your destination sure today. wherever you are right now it doesn't matter where we are don't be shy if you're around people if you're in a crowd maybe somewhere down the road you're going to be met with an accident and you will lose your life you don't know don't put it off a next second do it now just close your eyes and repeat the simple prayer after me Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I also acknowledge that you came and you died for my sins. I 
I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. I ask you to remove every unrighteousness from me. Cleanse me with your saving blood and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that short prayer, congratulations for your no heaven bound. For you have done exactly what you have what you need to do to start your journey. The Bible clearly tells us in Romans 10:13 that whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you have just done that. You are saved. You are now a Christian. So I would admonish you now to dig deeper. Dig deeper into the Lord. Serve the Lord with all your heart, mind, body and soul because as we have been learning over the past few weeks that we have no more time left. That the appointed time for the rapture is upon us. If you are a lukewarm Christian, you've heard the word of the Lord today. If your fire is out in get it back ablaze if you are lukewarm intensify the heat the time is now for there just may not be a tomorrow so thank you again for listening in to the watchman.